This is a smoke break with Spaceman Jones. Proudly sponsored by Earthy Now and Urban Combat Wrestling. All right, everybody, man. Once again, this is Spaceman Jones with a smoke break. And uh, we are here with a with with a with a real special guy, man. This is this guy right here uh, is somebody who I'm very very proud of, man. This is my main man. You see it on his shirt, man. He's the change agent. Phil <laughs> Some of y'all may know him as Pat, but this guy, man, man, this guy go back a while, man. We done a really um really have tried to make a change for the better in this little small town called Asheville, North Carolina. Man, how you doing today, uh, Phil, man? Well. I'm I'm doing much better than be, much better today than I have been over the past uh, 30 days. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying I've been surviving my emotions. It's been a lot going on uh, nationwide, and you know, uh, as a black man, I feel it strongly in Western North Carolina. As people yeah. talk about it, it's it's you know it's it's it, it gets me in an emotional place. You feel yeah. me? Yeah, yeah, I can I can definitely. Uh, feel that you know what I'm saying. The past two days, I think, has been the uh, first time that I've been able to uh, kind of make it through the day without crying. You know what I'm saying? Because it's been real. It's been real hard. You know, real, real hard to see how um, to see how things have been going. But um, as uh, on the smoke break, man, we like to start things off with a little with a little few moments of kind of getting grounded and centered. So I'm gonna count off ten breaths, and we gonna kind of get into it. And everybody who's listening, I, I really implore y'all to join in and just take your time to pause for something as small as 10 breaths. And um, I'll count them off as we go. One. Two. Three. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I want to give a shout out to my sponsors right now. Uh, Earthy Now, and you can find them at earthynow.com. Quality hemp and CBD products. And this morning, I am enjoying some of their sour space candy, man, from Roll Family Farm, 16.6, 16.2% CBG, real good medicine, man. I want you guys to check that CBD and CBG out, man. It's very good for uh, for a little aches and pains in the bodies, man. I use it every day. Also, shout out to our other sponsor. Urban Combat Wrestling for, and we definitely for the culture. Check us out June 19th, man. We're we going to be um, putting on a show for, for Juneteenth right there in the Hillcrest community. So come out and see some live wrestling and rap action June 19th from Urban Combat Wrestling. But right now, today, we in here, man, with Philip Cooper, a.k.a. the change agent, man, a man who is passionate about <laughs> people getting another chance in life, man. You know, we both are formerly incarcerated people. That's actually where I met you at. Um, mm -hmm. So for the folks who don't know who you are and what you're about, man, give them a little segue into what you do. Well, I'm a Western North Carolina native. Uh, some people some people think I'm an Asheville native, but I, I wasn't. I was actually not born in Asheville. I was born in Forest City, North Carolina. But, uh, you know, chose to made some bad decisions early in the game. I chose uh, uh, poor choice and role models. You know, I always wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I made those decisions to be like those ones in the hood because, you know, growing up in poverty, those were the people that I seen that was successful. It was accessible success. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's what I seen as success because they wasn't in poverty. They was riding clean. Yeah. They, they was flat. You know, they had the chain. Back then it wasn't skinny jeans, they had the baggy jeans, you know how it was. Oh, yeah, um, 
they, but you know, they they had the respect even from the old ladies because back then, you feel me, like the people in the streets respected their elders, right? It was a little yeah, different. It was a different. It was, a different um, it was a different. uh It was the generation right after baby boomers. You know what I'm saying? So we, it was still raised. People were still raised with a lot of those traditional values. Yeah. And and so you could see, and you could see it was kind of like they was, I mean, neighborhood superstars, you know, and um, and I and and that's what I identify as role models, and I've done the things they did. But the, the the sad part about the lifestyle that they lived, many of them, you know, they was in and out of prison, bro, you know, and so um, I jumped right into that lifestyle, and I ended up with those same uh, uh experiences as far as going in and out of prison. And so um, my prison, my final, my last prison stint where me and you first uh, linked up at was what led me to the lifestyle that I'm living now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm all about advocating for second chance at fair chance. I'm going to stop saying second because Lord knows I had more than more than one. Yeah, but, but also, you know, in, in yeah. doing a lot of the research uh, and, and, and trying to get myself free of the criminal designation trying to figure out how i can i've seen that a lot of times even for the first time we weren't supposed to be in there you know mm -hmm. um we weren't supposed to be in there not even the first time you know um uh, uh we, we we uh we have um in america we have really chosen to focus on uh the victims of the system instead of the ones who are keeping the system in place who have also been like i said before the show i think they're a little bit worse than the criminals are you know what i'm saying because they're going in willfully not just to 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 okay it's one thing to be tough on crime right and to want the uh, order and peace in the neighborhoods i can understand that but when you willfully uh kind of create an architect uh um you manufacture systems that are that will ensure that generations of people are gonna be held under a standard of living that they post to. I think that that right there is um is is much more evil than than than, than maybe selling a little bit of drugs or you know uh, yeah. economic crimes that we are that we that we are um, um that we are faced with you know having to having to do you know to survive you know what I'm saying because a lot of times nine times a lot of times um crime when it comes to poor people, people living in poverty is a is a means to survive. You know, um, uh, what do, what do you have to say about um, from from a from a from a from a viewpoint of a person who saw, like you said, that you had the wrong role models, that you made the wrong choices? What do you have to say about the way that the that the kind of that the board game was set up with us in mind? You see, what I'm saying, yeah. I think, well, like you say, man, that's that's a that's a whole nother level of evil. You know what I'm saying? That's dark. That's that's dark. And I believe it was set up that way, because like even when we look at the mandatory minimums, you know, um, and, and how that was, you know, under I think that was the Clinton administration. Yeah. Clinton, um, you know, they they knew what, they knew what they was doing. <laughs> they knew they knew what they was doing. Who it was gonna impact. They knew who it was going to impact. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then you bring in like uh, CCA and uh, uh, the GO Corporation, people who actually make money off of people being in prison. And then I start looking at it and, and it starts to change my idea of 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 the guys who we saw as kind of negative role models. I kind of see them as people who were doing the best they can in a situation that nobody really is. People are still kind of understanding the ramifications of the choices that was made by the lawmakers. You know what I'm saying? As it comes into to, 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 uh, especially dealing with black men. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the way that 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 could you speak a little bit? Because I know that personal responsibility goes a long way in making it in this society and system. Right. But I think that a lot of times we are not given our fair due to look at the circumstances in which we have to make it you yeah. see what I'm saying? like yeah. well since i mean since you speak about that as far as black men let I, I i appreciate you inviting me on the show and this is going to be a platform this is going to probably be one of the first platforms that i say this but with everybody now seeing that black lives matter right this these are things that we've been up against these are things that i've been saying for years as far as the black man and what we face getting out of prison yeah. So the thing is, bro, a lot of us, we don't have the mechanical aptitude at a young age. A lot of a lot of white men, you know, they get taught to do certain things with their hands, even if it's just around the house with Paw Paw and Uncle Jed. For us, 
we a lot of times we don't have that we don't have that work ethic so when we go to prison the ones who act right you know that connect because because what people don't understand it's not the correctional officers ain't really the ones that mold us it's the ogs in there that mold us just like you was my first sponsor when i was in prison you know what i'm saying me and you was walking the track me and lavelle you know what i'm saying but um to lavelle man yeah we go in there we get that structure and then we start thinking like you know what maybe i can make it you know i have it in me to make it and so boom you got this mindset you ready for the world but when you get released from prison the opportunities are not there no the opportunities with upward mobility ain't there i mean no shade to the kitchen but a lot of time they want to throw us in a dishwasher position okay now, now let's talk about this i'm well versed in yeah and that's that's well i have been making my living um day-to-day yeah. -day since i came home and even in prison i worked in kitchens for a long time uh, what i see i came yeah. home I went to I went to to the cook school. I got a diploma from AB Tech. First of all, that's where the first strike was at. They did we did the work, but they didn't give us the full degree. We did all of the work for the degree, but they gave us a diploma instead of a degree. So yeah. they, you know, which is cool, which is cool. Okay, it's, it got AB Tech on it, so that means something in the food world, especially in Asheville. But the thing about it is, when I went home. It was like I was getting thrown a bone to even have a job. That's the that's the attitude of yeah. a lot of the a lot of the the chefs or the managers. Uh, so they start you off with very low pay, very demeaning work, even though it's hard and it's honest. But the ceiling, if Come you look around, if you look around downtown, right, um, there are a few African Americans in positions of leadership, but very very few. Yeah. Uh, we are usually used um, to wash dishes. We are usually used to like prep or to, you know, do some of the more menial tasks in the kitchen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now you see the type of jobs that we get offered. Yeah. Um, I got told by one. I got told by one chef. Now I've been working at this restaurant um, and had had um, some success with being like a uh, a real cornerstone part of what they did for their lunch service. You know what I'm saying? Like I was able to improve a lot of the items on the menu. I was able to um, uh, create a consistency. And I still got passed over for leadership positions, for chef positions, because uh, I, I wear a beard and I have dreads. So mm -hmm. I'm clean cut. I'm not that that's what the that's what the man told me. Well, you know, if you you know, if you kind of clean your look up a little bit, then maybe I can promote you. You can be you can represent my restaurant, you mm -hmm. know, and uh told told a told a Hispanic guy um that you know he didn't speak English good enough, but he was the best cook on you know both shifts. Should have been should have been managers, you know what I'm saying? But because of uh cultural because of, 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 of pretty much, you know, people wanting to have a, a black dude look a certain way or to have a, 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 a Hispanic guy who can speak Spanish perfectly and English perfectly. You yeah, know, yeah. standards that, that, that we have to live up to that a lot of folk, that some folks don't have to live up to. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have to be absolutely perfect and exemplary. And not only that, we also have to have a certain, uh, like, wisdom, uh, uh, um, we got to be like a perfect person in, in order to make it pretty much, you know. And, yeah, and and I will add too, man. And this is this is my niche with my with my staffing agency that I'm starting right. And so I'm not all the way staffing agency yet. I'm doing like third party recruiting, and I'm partnering with another staffing agency that's owned by a black man, uh -huh. right? And he's gonna get the people that I recruit. I'm a mentor to them, and I get a cut. You know, so it's not like the it's not a normal staffing agency. But yeah. what you said as far as wisdom, you know, we the, the person that goes to work, uh, especially in Western North Carolina, has to have a mentor to help him survive the work culture. Because if you ain't used to being surrounded by people that don't look like you, it'll blow your mind. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. OK, I, I, I get a lot of flack for this. In my life, it seems like I'm always one or two flecks of pepper in the in, in the soup. <laughs> I look around, like I look at my life and I and I'm doing my thing and yeah. I look to where I'm at and like it's like dang, it's just me and a couple other black dudes and a whole bunch of white people. So I operate in a whole lot of uh overwhelmingly white spaces. Yeah. And you are right, man. If you do not have uh, um 
somebody who you can bounce things off of or a way to alleviate the stress and pressure, man, the things yeah. that you go through. Um, yeah. Man, this is uh, this this is a this is unbelievable. Like, really, we have to, uh, especially in kitchens. Let's say that you're working with some less than educated white, yeah. then you're gonna hear a lot of microaggressions, a lot of um, straight up sexual harassment. Yep. You know, little, little slick, little slick, little comments about little, yeah, yeah, you know, about like. Democrats, you know, and I'm not a Democrat, but but you know, they'll just them being bold enough and, yeah. and confident enough to make those kind of statements uh, out the, loud. Well, uh, it's, it's, I think that what's happened is that the race, the race relations in America have definitely devolved. Yeah. Um, we and and even before then, like I shouldn't have to like put up with dick jokes every time I go to work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I shouldn't have to like be damn near ready to beat somebody up in order to get to the regular level of respect that a human is afforded. Mm-hmm. And it seems like a man, you, you see what I'm saying? It's like I've been having to come out my character sometimes just to get y'all to treat me like a human being, you know? Yeah, and I've dealt with that. I've dealt with that in my arena. And and it, before I give you the example of how I dealt with it in my arena, I do wanna I wanna make sure for the listeners that are that are hearing, it is it is important. For, for the individual who is, is returning from incarceration to have a support, had to have support group that's culturally aligned, that yep. understands the same way it was when we was in the streets, man. We survive, though a lot of our street smart supplies whenever we go to work. We got to have like a big homie. We got to have a group of people that we kicking it with to get through our hard times. You yep. feel me? It's hard to do by yourself. Yep. And if you don't have that, you'll lean toward uh, the people that you went to before. And that's why a lot of people return to those behaviors, return to using and return to uh, breaking the law. It's not because they're not happy with their job. A lot of times it's just they're not happy with their life. And it's hard to live the good life without having positive influences in that life. It is. It is. And and I can say um, for a fact, man, that that you definitely have to have a support system uh, because the way the thing. OK. Study came out a couple of days ago that in Asheville, in order for somebody to make rent on a one bedroom, they got to work 51 hours a week. That is a full, that's that's two jobs. That's two jobs for a one bedroom. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So the pressure that we living under in this town to make ends meet um, is a really superhuman, it takes a superhuman person to come through without the frustrations and the stresses and you know, um, so what you're saying is very true about having a support group of people who are, you say, culturally, culturally alive. I like I like these phrases that you're coming up that you <laughs> that you are introducing me to culturally aligned. And that's something that's very important because the stress of going to work, yeah. um, you already dealing with all of that. And then to have a, a peer group mm-hmm. that maybe not. That maybe can't understand what you're going through, um, but that, but, but if you're living in Asheville, there's a lot of hope because I think that this city out of a lot is exceptional for the amount of black men who have been formerly incarcerated who are now walking a good path, and it's got all kind of flavors. Maybe you're not on the AA NA tip. There's plenty of brothers out there who not on the AA NA tip church tip who doing the right thing who done been to jail you know and, and if it's plenty you see what i'm saying this this city right here i give a shout out to uh, the, the architects of the black community of this town because they put some strong stuff in these people man we was able to go down the road and come back and yeah. want to become different yeah me and my me and my man uh rob thomas i don't know if you met him but you you need to get him on the show if you haven't he's the uh the community liaison for the uh, the racial justice coalition. He's he's born and raised in Asheville too. He's from the, I think bro uh from the north. Yeah. Uh, but um but yeah he's solid bro. You know what I'm saying? And he's one of those individuals man that got out. It's on fire. Younger younger brother. I think bro might be around my age or maybe a year or two younger. But yeah. on fire for change on the front lines. You know holding local government accountable. You feel me? And it's and it's a lot of us that's 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 out here now. And me and him talk about trying to throw like an event once we get past this shutdown 
to where we can uh throw an event like a second chance party you feel me like have some uh have some uh booths you know, uh, a fair chance employer booth set up some uh some cooking probably get big gene in there to throw something throw something together or, or put, put so some big gene in. I yeah so i think that we also got to start challenging the courthouse for some of these erroneous false uh, uh convictions that they putting on brothers they're not telling brothers all of their remedy under the law they defrauding us yeah defrauding us and tricking us in to prison which i think is human trafficking genocide fraud yeah. you know what i'm saying we, we we always going up there talking about racism and he discriminated against me and we need a fair chance to let's start convicting these people about some of the crimes that they committing on us every single day at their courthouse you got these you got these uh 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 uh, uh these lawyers, yeah, that's not doing their jobs. Public pretenders. Public pretenders that's not doing. Don't they take an oath? <laughs> don't they got a bond that they? Don't they take an oath and they got a bond that they got a? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, why y'all doing us like this? We gonna start. Let me let me tell you about. It. So there's a young man. So I got two different stories. So one of them is a young man. Um, yeah. Guess the way that they finessed it to where he wouldn't have to go lay down for a long time, but he had to. He had to plead to a whole bunch of charges. It's like a whole bunch of them. Yeah, he, he cleared the books for him. He cleared the book for him. <laughs> a whole bunch of And it looks so bad on record to where, like, the quality of life that you get when it comes when on the floor no. looks at all of those. It's no good. And then, one, and then one young lady, she ended up taking a charge with a dude. You know how it is. Some yeah. of them, you know, she ended up taking a charge with a guy. And, and the, the actual charge it's just like conspiracy to or, or whatever it was. And so now when they see her background kidnapping or whatever, you know what I'm saying? They see that on her background, it, you know, that shoots her down for, for many of the careers that she was most interested in. Yeah. They didn't have to hit her with that. You feel me? They didn't have, they really didn't have to hit her with that. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. And I think that, that, that for the most, for the most part, what we have is a predatory criminal justice system. Who preys on the most vulnerable of us in yes. society, uh, and I think that we don't have partners in the DA office. I don't think we have partners at the police department, but of the community. And I think that maybe, just maybe, some of these little guys don't need to be bouncing no basketball and rapping to no microphone. Maybe they need to be at law school at the police academy. You know, we need some people on the force that got the idea that that we are the same type of people. You yeah. see what I'm saying? They shipping all these people in from all these different communities. I mean, when I was growing up, you had Walt, Walt Daddy, like a yeah. lot of that was that was from the place. They ain't gonna beat you down if they know you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So maybe so maybe that might be that might be a career choice for some of our young men that's coming up that's seeing a lot of wrong in this. And you and you know that you want to help, man, go be the police, man. And do yeah. it right. Yeah. And do it right. We we need we need to change from the inside, man. Yeah. We need more black people who think that Black Lives Matters as prosecutors, as DAs, as police people, as 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 congressmen, as state senators, as you know, let's get into these fields. Yeah. And let's change it from the inside, man. We got we have to put we have to. Either that or we gotta separate completely. Yeah, you know? Because yeah. the yeah. way we have, um, uh, say <laughs> what? And have to police our own people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I mean, but okay, now let's talk about that. Because a lot of people, a lot of black folks don't want to even touch that. They don't even want to touch that, how we got to police our own. You know what I'm saying? How we have to bring back a, a sense of respect for and the family. family. And yeah. accountability for the family. Yeah. For the family for the little kids that got to grow up, you know, in this stuff. And I know it's bad. And I know that we are underprivileged and we got to do things to survive because it ain't nothing like that out there. But the indiscriminate, like, no love for life. You see what I'm saying? Like, we got to we gotta learn type of ways, like guys our age. I got a 22-year-old son and two grandkids. You got kids that's growing up. And a lot of the disconnect from our gender, especially me being older than you, like these kids don't want to hear nothing that I have to say. And I'm wondering how can I connect because I need to connect. Yeah, I, I got and I got some I, I have some ideas, man, as far as like how we can get the ones once they touched. And I hate to say it, 
uh, I'm with prevention, but sometimes whenever the family unit does not have a strong man, uh, consistent presence in the household, sometimes the, the kid has to hit the system before discipline is activated. Just yeah. and, and, and it's just that's just what it is. It's sad, but it is what it is when there's no uh, 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 there's no man in the household. The 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 boy, the young man suffers. Right. There's no consistent positive role model. The young man suffers. And a lot of time the system is where they first get a taste of discipline. I yeah. think we have to improve what we offer to these 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 young men once they hit the system. You know what I'm saying? Like, because what they have programs, they have the the misdemeanor diversion programs. They have these these programs, juvenile crime prevention. Mm -hmm. But they have to be intentional about diversifying and culturally aligned services. How can we how can we get some mentors? Some yeah, some, right some, now. some of these OG guys. Yeah. We hey, need you I need some addresses and some names so I can drop some letters to these little guys. Yes. But listen, listen, this is this is the thing. So let's go back to what you said about the 50, 51 hours is what's needed to work in Asheville. OK, they need to 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 they've been talking about this budget and I'm trying not to say too much about uh, specific numbers and everything out of respect for the group of uh, leaders that are meeting now uh, with these demands for Asheville. Salute to them for what they're doing. I have a call with one of their people today and I'm going to shoot them what recommendations I have, but we got to have, we got to push these resources towards these mentors. Cause you, you remember we said it take 51 hours to survive in Asheville, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So they need to be contracting some men to you know, that can work with these, these, uh, uh, high risk, uh, opportunity youth, but it needs to be through a program. It needs to be through a contract and it needs to support the family unit. You feel me? Exactly. exactly. The family unit. Because a lot of times what we do, man, we'll pull these young men, they'll be at risk, and we'll pull them out and we kind of separate them off from their family to kind of enrich them, but they still got to go home to the same environment. We need holistic, like in every community, there's a community center. Why do we not have slates of classes all day? You see what I'm saying? Like, why, where's the education at? When they took it away and they gave it to the police so that they could buy tanks and drones, straight up. Straight up, they took the you money. In that, listen, bro, you need to be in that room. So I'm, I'm gonna put this, put your name down, cause like we, we do have to make sure that we have a voice in the room, you know. And it's, it's some of us, but all of us, you know, some of us stretch thin and we busy, and we have to have, we have to have diversity and representation, even as the black man, cause you got some black, black male professionals, you got some black male formerly incarcerated. You got some black male that's just got influence without a without a title. You heard? And so we got to we got to work together. We all got to yeah. work together because um, without a without a voice of solidarity from black men, they are going to continue to criminalize us, continue to kill us, and slave us out. You know, right. so we, you know, so we we have to take this step and this opportunity that we have right now to join. Uh, other ethnical brothers that done bonded together, like you don't hear these type of complaints, you know, out of the Korean community, out of the Japanese community, out of the Arab American community, because they, they already know what it is. They got they done stuck together. But see, we got to re we got to like re engineer ourselves to get out of the baloney that we yeah. done thinking about ourselves. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. we need all of y'all to help out. Yeah. And I'd be glad to step in on any anywhere that I need to be. Yeah. And, and back to the question you said, as far as how how do we how do we get this this resource in place for these for these these young men who are struggling yeah. you know programming and being and being intentional about involving the the strong black man's voice at the table up front and not in the end so yeah. we can be in there up front and we can say okay this is what we need how many people are we looking to serve okay how many people can each person serve you know and this can be a this can be a side, side hustle because you know you need additional streams of income in bunker county anyway anyway yep, so, sure. and a lot of us are mentoring anyway and not getting paid for it but we're doing it as best we can with what time we have left yeah. but it hit different when you're getting paid for it it shows sure and, and this and this right here is something that you that 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 the people need to really understand to mentor yeah the young black youth that is that is at, at risk is going to save y'all way more money because it costs too much to go through court. It costs too much to have somebody in the jail and to house them in prison. It yeah. costs too much. And not only that, but the psychological ramifications of going through that system. We want to save anybody 
from that. Mm -hmm. the story. Because I know that when I was in that lifestyle, I was a ticking time bomb. I could <laughs> have, no, I could have caused a lot more harm and damage than I did if I wouldn't have got the brakes put on. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We have a responsibility to lift ourselves up because it's obvious. It's obvious that the people around us don't want to lift us up. You see what I'm saying? So we got to do it for ourselves, speaking as black men specifically. Yeah, and I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit you with this quote from Malcolm X real quick. And one of my white, my white ally buddies, uh, has has been quoting a lot, <laughs> quoting a lot of Malcolm X. <laughs> but Malcolm X said, "I wanted to find the the word word for word quote, but it it the, this is a, a, a just a paraphrase because I don't I can't find here it is. Instead of changing the mind of the white man." We change the mind of the black man and make him accept himself. As soon as he accepts himself, he'll solve his own problem. Yeah. And I think that we see in the beginning of that, you know what I'm saying? Who would have thought that you would have had so many uh, young guys from the hood, supposedly who have no empathy for any other human beings? Who would have thought that these would have been some of the most courageous ones that we've seen on the front lines, like talking about change? You yeah. see? So that proves so that proves that, that 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 human spark that makes us like uh, that spark of humanity that makes us this I don't know man I mean humans are kind of special when you look at when you look at everything that that is in existence humans is kind of special yeah. we can pick up our own minds come you on see what I'm saying? Yeah. so to to see that spark of human that I knew was there but to other people they have to acknowledge it now because it's being spoke you know what yeah. I'm saying? All over the place. And to yeah. see that my young black men in this town who never had, who you never would have thought ever would have been any kind of activist or had any kind of mindset like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It makes me proud and happy, man. I know, man. Proud. I know, it, and, and man, I got to give all glory to, to God because I'm telling you, bro, like, I had found, so I had my old laptop and uh, and I got I had I went through my old laptop to get all the stuff transferred off, and I was listening to some of my old raps, bro. Man, I, I was listening to that. I was man, I was gone, bro. I'm talking about, and now I'm sitting here talking about some policies and and yeah. and uh, uh, you know, workforce development and recovery. Man, I was gone, bro. You feel me? And a lot of times, that's why it's the people like that that have been to prison, got out, been to hell and back want to give back that was that was what we, when we say school of hard knocks that was our college yeah, man. that was our master's degree that was a degree from the master you know what i'm saying and and everything that we went through that was you know from the time we did the time in the street that was our internships our apprenticeships you feel me and then when we got out we got coached by somebody a lot of times somebody had that had made it out yeah. or someone that knew how to talk to us and respect us you know, and then we, we feel like we obligated to give back. Like some of us, we won't sleep at night if we ain't helping somebody. You feel me? Yeah, man. That's what it is, man. Each one, teach one, everybody. Um, everybody, man, y'all y'all make sure that y'all tap in with you guys if you got people in your life that's, that's kind of going through it and you know that they done been in trouble and they're trying to make it. Tap in with them, man. You never know what a phone call or do or, you know, going to go have a coffee with somebody or just being a listening, uh, a listening ear or a helping hand, man. You know, it don't cost too much, but it always repay you back in ways that you can't buy with money. You know, um, you got anything that you that you that you're working on right now that the people need to tap into that you need some help with, man. Go ahead and send out the call. <clears throat> well, first and foremost, you know, for my for my prayer warriors that's on the line, man, do do be sending prayers out for your boy because I know my strength does not come from me. It comes from the Lord Almighty. And then, you know, as far as what I have going on uh, project wise, I was just awarded a micro grant from the Chamber of Commerce uh, to, to start my staffing agency. You know, and my niche is just working with people who are who are formerly incarcerated. You know, that is my niche. That's who I'm wanting to serve. And we're using the, the peer support model. So, um, you know, right now, you know, it's a lot of work, back end work that has to be done for a staffing agency to run. So I'm partnering with Work Staffing Group. So if anybody on here has any friends who are business owners that's going to be hiring people and would like to use this model to make sure they get somebody that gets mentoring, right, uh, um, then, then holler at me. You know, um, it's not hard to find me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on uh, LinkedIn. 
on LinkedIn is Philip Cooper. On Facebook is Philip Cooper. On Instagram is Change Agent Cooper. Um, that's one thing I'm working on as far as a solution in workforce. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, just just staying woke, man. To, uh, if you want to keep up with the happenings in Asheville as far as like what's going on with Black Asheville, make sure you tune in to uh, the Racial Justice Coalition. You can go on Facebook and you go to Racial Justice Coalition of Asheville. Make sure you follow Umoja Health, Wellness and Justice. Yeah. Um, you also and, and online it's rjcavl.org and you can go on there sign up to become an advocate be in the note you feel me um the facebook pages are amazing a lot of content comes out on social media so that racial justice coalition of Asheville is a place where you can stay woke um and then um, uh, that big day me and you I, i'm gonna add your name to the list because like we be so busy sometimes we be forgetting about each other you know what i'm saying but but uh but you definitely need to be in the room and definitely a part of the solution, especially as a person who, uh, you know, came up here. You know, it ain't many natives. This, 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 you know what I'm saying? And it's the native voice has to be undergirded in this season. Yeah, the native voice, um, it had a lot of time has been washed out because I think that um, that Asheville, especially the black population of Asheville, has uh, had so much trauma happen to it as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Again and again, it seems like um, we, we keep, and I think that a lot of times our native voice um, is, is more concerned about trying to make ends meet and trying to get from A to B and, and handle the responsibilities of life. That yeah. a lot of times we, we allow, um, well, we, we are we trying to rest up for the next day. So a lot of times some of the people who might not be from here uh, takes up our voice. So all of y'all guys out there, man, who got something to say, man, who got an idea, don't be afraid to speak on it. You know, there's people out here listening that won't change, man. There's a lot of people who won't, who won't, who want to, who want something to do and they don't know how to do it. Like ideas don't come to everybody. Yeah. And we got a lot of resources here for the entrepreneurs. Man. We have tons of resources. We got the small business incubator at, a, uh, at AB Tech Community College. We got uh, 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 Mount Biz Works. I mean, they have money for the minorities that are trying to start businesses, the Mount Community Capital Fund. There are so many resources for the entrepreneurs, man. It's crazy. Yeah, man. And um, and y'all make sure that y'all tap into the smoke break, man. This is going to be all the time that we have right now. Man, thank you, Philip, for coming on and talking to us, man. We really appreciate the work that you're doing in the community. And um, thank you very much. You know, and we'll be back next week, y'all, man. This is Spaceman Jones with a smoke break, man. And y'all stay up, man. Be groovy. This has been a smoke break with Spaceman Jones, sponsored by Earthy Now and Urban Combat Wrestling. See you next week. <laughs>